What's up, TAW Mafia? It's Yeti. Uh, it's TAW Daily. Um, as always, you can find us on the Twitterverse at the number three. That's the numeral three. Irish Boys with a Z. That's number three. Irish Boys with a Z. That's me, uh, JP, Yeti, Nico, uh, Joe, and all the gang. But let me bring in the man. What's, What's going up, on? How are you doing, man? I'm all right. It's a... Uh... Are you, you know, uh, I talked to you earlier, you sort again? of a, like, oh, the daily. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love that. I like doing yeah. this. You're, I mean, you ready? Just. Yeah. Here's what people don't know: It's like this is basically what we do every day on the phone, but we just decided <laughs> to share it with everybody else. Right. Right. I mean, are we right? So I'm gonna run through this stuff. Um, are you able to see the comments, dude? Yes. Yes. Can so you I can get the, the I can... comments, JP. I'll try. Okay. I'm going to leave you in charge because I'm going to go to a uh, wrestling news source where we actually uh, receive all our wrestling news. If you do listen to our podcast, if you don't, you should make sure you subscribe um, pretty much anywhere. Uh, any podcast is available. Specifically, if you could subscribe through iTunes and give us a five star rating, that'd be awesome. But if we suck, then let us know too. Right, JP, you're bringing up the website. You're bringing up wrestlingnewsource.com. You want me to bring that up, or you? No, dude, I got you. So we're just gonna run this. I'm gonna bang it out, but I'm gonna make sure I've got the information here while we go. Is that cool? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get, and I'll keep an eye on the comments. Okay, let's do this, man. So check it out. Was... WWE moving out of the Performance Center and moving into the Amway Center is 100% legit, dude. 100%. What's up, Ricky? Like that's gonna happen. Like that's happening. They're, they've got that um, supposedly, according to Wrestling News Source, is WB is said to have the arena rented out for the rem- remainder uh, of 2020, and also are the only <laughs> event running in it right now. So is there a why? Is this... hey, I don't get why. Well, Florida. I mean, if they, I mean, they're either going to get reach a tipping point with this coronavirus where it's not going to matter, or. Uh, they're, they're going to get to a point where they can be one of the first states to lift restrictions and they can have bigger groups, right? Isn't and they already cool? have something rented out. Exactly. They've got it secure. I mean, isn't that you as know a what they person, should do? isn't that what you're thinking? You know what they should do for SummerSlam? What? And tell me if I'm wrong. Yes, you're wrong. Hurry up, come on. It's daily. I'm probably am. But here, so instead of, um, instead of, do what Metallica's doing right now, what me and you just talked about. And Show SummerSlam at the drive-ins. You can't charge Metallica prices. What's up, Mad Mad Dog? Mad Dog's in here every day with us, man. Shout yeah. out to you. So you're saying um, drive-ins, right? Drive-ins are theaters, right? Because AMC's right. getting ready to open up on the 21st. Yeah, 15 cents a movie. Yeah, right. So I'm cool with that. Like, I'm I'm all right. So I don't know. Will both of you guys be applying to be a virtual fan at SummerSlam? That's a negative. No. I if might. I'm gonna, it's... I'm not, dude. I've, if I'm going to apply to be a virtual fan, it's going to be at a major league baseball park. That's where it's going to be. I know the baseball's charging for the uh, to have the cardboard cutouts. Um, are they charging WWE? Know, Probably. All right. Okay. Hey, check it out. Dewey Foley <laughs> gets major creative promotion in 205 Live. What do you think of that? When's the Kane last time Dewey. you saw Dewey Foley? Uh, the when they had that um reality show on the network. Uh, yes. What was that called? The Foley's. The Foley's. Hello, Foley. Mick, whatever. Yeah, I don't remember what awesome. it was. I, I, I watched, that, I watched oh, yeah. that mainly for Noel when she was wrestling or going to wrestle. Yes. So, son of Hall of Famer uh, Mick, of course, would probably become one of the key creative forces behind the 205 Live product. It was noted this week by the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that right now Foley and Adam Pierce are the main ones behind 205 Live creative. So that's pretty cool, dude. Yeah, yeah there's that's some good stuff bump. going on. Dude. That's a huge bump for him. I mean, to be in charge of 205 Live? I know 205 gets like a bad rep because it's like the the C show, but they got some great talent there. Dude, I guess this is my this is my rub with that is like the, the two the Cruiserweight Classic created the 205 Live. Right. And I don't know, man. Cool. So Ricky Pete's he's going to be a virtual fan there. That's that is cool. Yeah. He's big beside the scenes in NXT. Cool. Whatever. That's, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. Uh, and, and the reason I bring that up here to, is because when we go into our next subject, and some of you may or may not know this, but Delirious is back in charge of yeah. ROH Creative again. Oh, so, really? 
Yeah. Um, so earlier this week, Ring of Honor announced uh, they would be resuming television production for the first time in a while. Marty Skrull, the booker before their hiatus, is currently on the sidelines. It seems as though Delirious has come back to fill the role. So with Marty Skrull out, Delirious is coming in. So that's huge, right? I mean, that's a big deal. Delirious did a great job. But Delirious was responsible for bringing in uh, a lot of like the independent guys that really kind of ROH formed around of guys like Dijak and um, the War Machine or War Raiders, whatever they were back then. Um, guys like that really came in um, under Hunter's so sorry under Delirious's reign. So I think that's a great thing for. Uh, I think you'll see some probably new faces come up again. How? I mean, Delirious has got to be what like. I don't know, twenty year vet at least thirty. Yeah, years vet? yeah, like, I mean, I remember when I started going to shows fifteen years ago. He was a veteran at that point, so. Yeah, hey, Mad Dog. Nothing is confirmed as far as WWE going into live shows, but you got to re- you got to remember that Florida is very friendly to the uh, the wrestling product because that's where all of that is currently happening. Plus, um, restrictions and stuff. Is, um, Florida will probably be one of the first states like me up here in Montana. I mean, restrictions are basically do whatever, whenever, um, except for crowds. And I mean, they're having concerts now in little gated areas over in the UK. I mean, people are figuring this thing out. So, I mean, when you're losing, what was that? What was that? Like, I can't remember, like $30 million or billion dollars in pay-per-view revenue loss for live or live events. Like you gotta, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta figure something out. Right. So So that's the thing is this is when they lose live events. Yeah. You got the arena here to be a virtual fan. So however, the virtual, I don't know if you get commemorative stuff like that, you know, I guess that's really you what Ricky's saying too. So you know, you don't only lose the gate money; you also lose all the revenue that would be generated in there—the merchandise revenue, the programs, and stuff like that—that that they would have sold in the arena. So, I'm, so you I'm, you lose. Go ahead. A lot. It it affects merch sales. It affects everything. A hundred percent. I mean, it, right now, trust me, there are guys out there that are are, are on television. <laughs> but not making a whole lot of money right now, right? I mean, that's really where it's at because some of it comes from product and the other stuff. What are you doing, texting your mom? Uh, no. No? Texting, I'll say I'll say texting number four. Oh, okay. Um, uh, your mom didn't like one of my tweets today. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. It was MJF swearing at you. <laughs> my mother, th- my my mother was defending you. Should I play that in front of us? Let's just play it. Can I just play it because it's hilarious? Yeah, yeah. Go hey, Josh, it's MJF. Heard you're a big fan. Guess what? I don't give a shit. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I couldn't hear any sound on that. Ah, uh, they can. They can on that end. You just can't hear it because I'm playing it on this end. Okay, let's hope. Hopefully, maybe not. Maybe I just. <laughs> maybe I did. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. You know. That's. Yeah. So. Hey, cool. R- uh, Rick, Ricky uh, brings up a cool point. Look at this. I hope XFL uh, has virtual fans. I don't want American football, but I will watch XFL because of who owns it. I just thought that same thing today, hundred percent. Like this is one of those times. I, like you could legit make. There's some turnaround here that could happen with the XFL and people that are aren't playing, man. I want AFL though. I want American. Well, not AFL. I want American football. I'm I want my you. Patriots. I, I you know, I want oh my. my st- I want your Steelers. I want the Patriots. I want all of it. I want Miami. I want you know all the teams I hate. I want to hate. I want to see Tom Brady play for Tampa Bay. Be, I'm gonna hate him. I'm gonna boo him. But I want to see it. Okay. One of Velveteen Dreams' accusers responds to his NXT return, claims he was never contacted for any investigation. What are your thoughts on that, JP? Is that what do you think? Um, I think it just goes to show something you've been saying for the past couple of weeks that Nobody people kind of don't care about this anymore. Nobody cares anymore because it's old news, and that's why the storylines don't work because nobody gives a shit about people. I don't anymore. think I, I nobody don't gives think a shit this about stuff... people anymore. This is shitty, dude. This is real shitty. This is real shitty for right. the industry. It's real shitty for the example that's being set by the supposedly an industry leader. It's real shitty for the entire industry. It's it's shitty. I, it's shitty all around. I don't around. think There's it should be forgotten. Changing. I... There's nothing changing, dude. There's nothing changing. But... There's nothing that will change. Velveteen Dream, why are some of these individuals released and some of them not? You know why, JP? 
Because you need caffeine. You know why? Money. Money, That's it. money, money. That's it. Shareholders. Shareholders and money. Sorry. Dude, I, I guess this is the thing. This is where I'm having a really hard time standing behind the product. Like, this is one of those moments where I start to question my fandom a little bit. Am I wrong in that? No, because, like, we, I mean, a little behind the scenes on the Irish Whip for you guys, like, we had guests on, not, we waited a couple weeks after, and I actually looked into the guests that we had on to make sure their names weren't going to come out at any point, because I didn't want to have to do a show, produce a show, edit a show, and then pull a show down. Yeah, I guess, and, and, and plus, dude, like, think of this, like, just think of the amount of people that are looking and reading my reaction and nothing has happened to me. I'm not affected by this. I just talk about it. And nobody gives it two shits what I say about it, but think about the people that have really been affected by this. I mean, for real, man. For real. Right. I have very little money invested in pro wrestling. I have a lot of friends in pro wrestling that are... Yes. Green What's Day. home to him right now? What is home to him right now? There is no home for the colony right nope. now. There's no home and, for Fist. And he's okay with that right now. <clears throat> well, So I can't say anything about that, but it's... uh. Two things, dude. Okay, we got to move on. We got to keep moving here. Um, yes. How long have we been watching wrestling? Uh, Ricky, I can't tell you how old I am, but I've been watching wrestling for probably um, 35 years. I'm about 40. Yeah. I, I think I, I was five or six years old. So Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I guess that's that's it. So, so next, next, you ready for the next one? I'm always I'm ready. Ready for this one, dude. So Vince Man has religiously torn up major plans for AJ Styles. Details revealed. You ready? Sure. Uh, AJ Who Styles. does this come from, though? Like, I hate these stories. Uh, Dave, your buddy Meltzer. Yeah. Can I explain? You, you, let's see the story, and then I'm going to tell you my take on what probably happened. Vince McMahon has torn up those plans along with a lot of other angles that were set to take place on the blue brand. Right? So it, okay. just, it just further... I guess what I'm trying to figure out, man, is like when we're looking at this and in the scale of what we talked about yesterday with like or two days ago, shit, I don't remember now, Seth Rollins and his comment that fans can't handle long storylines anymore. Is it a, is a generation gap and a breakdown now between Vince McMahon and this newer generation that's coming up of fans? But I mean, I don't know for sure that anything actually changed because what these guys do is they predict a storyline when that storyline and they supposedly get it from insiders. Uh, but then, and sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they nail it, but a lot of times they miss. And when they miss, they always say, well, change plans changed. And it works every time, right? Right. Well, I guess that's. And I'm not I, saying. No, the reason why like, I bring Mouse it up is, is one of the more reliable, but he's still one of them. Well, and we don't give, that's why we don't read spoilers and do spoilers. And one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to do something like this too, is for people could, could actually see that like. When I do stuff like this, there's a reason behind it, and especially when JP's on here, is because, like, he'll call people on their shit, and he doesn't care. Like, you'll just call people on their <laughs> shit. Like, you don't – it, you know, it's like the rating system. I just – I'm over it, man. I don't I don't care. It just – whatever. Right. Moving so on. here's the thing is – yeah, and the ratings, get, the ratings get twisted, too, to – um, this one's a shame, by the way. But the ratings got twisted, too, to be benefit whoever they want to. AEW was losing in the ratings, but guess what? They got the right demographics. So um, they, they got crushed by Raw, even though they're not on Monday nights, but they got the right, they beat them in the right demographics, but they're not on Monday nights. No. It's just, you know, when they're talking about the Wednesday Night Wars, it's just not the same. And when you're talking about a 0 0.16 rating, that was, that's not even close to anything that we were speaking and watching wrestling for whatever. But anyway, Monday Night on. Wars. Yeah. Jimmy Havoc, B. Priestley, and Sadie Gibbs removed from official AEW website roster page, which really, I mean, one of them I can understand. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Right. The other two, I think really, according to what Sadie Gibbs put out on her Twitter, is that it's, I think it's pandemic and coronavirus-based, and it's a matter of travel and just it's logistics, and it's... it's is that what it was? Dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... they could put... If I were them, I would put be, be a Priestley with uh, Jungle Boy and call them 90210. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. Hey, this one, uh, this one I picked specifically for you. Eric Rowan wanted the world's smallest woman to be in his cage. 
Like remember when he was talking about walking out and he would walk out in the WWE and he had that cage and he would like lift the top off, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, they're reporting again. This is from Wrestling News Source, right? Uh, again, okay. Quoting sources, which is Sportskedia, um, that Rowan wanted to get in contact with the world's smallest woman to, to get her to fit into the cage. cage. I think that would be hysterical. It would have been. It, that's your type of. That's your type, right? That's your gig, right? That's your gimmick. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I, I just think they're funny. There you go, JP. Who's your all-time favorite wrestler? His is The Rock. Ricky Pates is The Rock. Huh? I'd have to say, uh, boom, 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 today, Stone Cold. Don't mind but it. I rotate. Yeah, you know, mine is, and I haven't realized this till recently. It's taken me a long time, JP, to come to this. Like, you guys all have your favorite wrestlers. I've had a really hard time coming to grips with who mine is. Because, like, it's just I, I identify with it. Like, it's AJ Styles. AJ Styles is my favorite all time. Your all time favorite, favorite? Yeah, he really is. Really? Like, okay. I could. I, I could mean, sit, to each. I could sit down and watch AJ Styles all day long. I could probably do the same thing with Ric Flair, but it gets old. It just does. Like, there's something that AJ Styles brings to everything, and everyone, and everywhere he goes. That's. I mean, I'll I'm give sure, it to you. I'm sure Flair was the same. I mean, some people would would argue, I'm sure, that that's a ridiculous statement, but I don't care. Do no, we? it's to each their own. I mean, he's been doing it for 20 years, 15 years. Okay. Well, uh, 15 at a high, high level. Yeah. So, yeah. So we've been going for almost uh, 20 minutes now, right? We talked about the W Performance Center uh, moving out. Um, we talked about Dewey Foley in 205 Live. We talked about Delirious and Witch Creative, um, Vince McMahon um, and AJ Styles. Like you said, it's, you know, storylines change. And that's why when, when we talk about how we don't really invest a lot of time in a dirt sheet, it's things like this that when we bring it up, it's because, yeah, I'm sure there was probably five or 10 or 15 different scripts torn up on eight different right. occasions as far as 20 different storylines that... You know, 15 people didn't want to write about, and they have to figure out one of those that works, right? We, they got to figure it. that out. Mad Dogs is Kane. That's a cool, I don't hear that very That's a often. good show. Yeah, that's a good pick, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's a unique I have a Glenn, like I have a Glenn a Jacobs fan, Nico. I have a Glenn Jacobs uh, t shirt. Hey, I thought Glenn about, Jacobs. You, know I was thinking, you know what I was thinking about buying? What's is that? Is that boxed wrestling fig set. On ringside collectibles, that is actually a cane box, but it's the Undertaker dressed up as the cane. But it's all inside there. It's all boxed. Was it up when he was there. really? Yeah, I, I haven't have to, seen I'll that. Send a picture of it to you. Yeah. Was um, it when he also, was Kane the Undertaker? What? Remember when he was Kane the Undertaker? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I want to know: Is are you? Are you? You don't do wrestling figures, do you? You don't. You just. You don't I appreciate them. them. Um, I, I'd say the next one I buy is going to be probably, um, Viking Raiders for obvious reasons, but yeah, I, I don't just, collect you, them per se. I sent se. you that, right? I sent you that, uh, link to those. No, you sent that to someone else. What? That link? The picture? Yeah. Of Rowan? Of, of, I of yours? No, of Ivar. Of the Fiend? Of Ivar and... Oh, no, no. They have figures. They have ROH figures. Well, I know, but I'm talking about the WWE ones, like the real FX ones, like where they scan their face. And oh, shoot. no. Are they out? Uh, they are going to be out. I think they are taking pre-orders for them right now. Uh, I, may, so, I may do that. Yeah. You know what I appreciate? I like not the Hasbros. I appreciate the old LGNs because that's what I grew up on. I just, I'm a, you, you know, I guess the reason why, and I bring up fig teas because if you guys, a lot of people in our podcasting world, like this is, it's Friday, it's five minutes of our time that I want to dedicate to a cool thing that a lot of people that we know that are in the know and do, that gets fun, dude. It really Those is guys. fun. It's, it's cool as shit. So I just want to take, you know, nine, four minutes to do this, right? Yes. Yes. It is correct. Yeah. That is correct. I was just as well as many more to come, I'm sure, if they open it up. But um, so, like, dude, this is, I just want to just take 
take a second here and just like so for fifteen dollars, JP and ninety seven cents, I found this. That's baby. a bad for you. That's an awesome for you, Walmart. Like, just appreciate, dude. For fifteen dollars, like just a fifteen dollars and that's not an cents. elite. A legit, yeah, dude. Look, you know what I went? You know what I saw? It isn't. That's an elite Bray Wyatt. I bought it at Walmart for fifteen dollars and ninety seven cents. I went and watched. Uh, Kurt, Haw- so, Kurt Hawkins so and Zack Ryder film a commercial for their action figures uh, for I, the WWE Network. They did it I, locally here, and I found out about it, so I went to the Walmart and literally watched them film it. I legit have like a top shelf wrestling fig thing going right now, and it's not like price or anything like that. It's just like uniqueness. It's unique to me. Like I love, I love the Fiend. Um, there's a couple. Um, Ballers that uh, I have. Timber bought me one that's really cool, really hard to find. It's him with the top hat on, or like the the Mr. Oh, Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah, hat. yeah, yeah. So I have one action figure. Hang on. Oh God. I wish I only had no, one a, action figure. This is a good one. It's very deep. This is a very giant. This is a very giant man walking in a very small place. It's just happening right now. Without his headphones on. And he's like, this is what happens. He sucks up my time. He just leaves me, abandons me, leaves me alone. No, I'm right here. Oh, okay. <gasps> no way, dude. Is that Rick Rude? Dude. Is that Ravish Rick Rude? Rude? It's Ravish and Rick Rude, unmatched fury. Box is in beat up condition. But I found this for like $4 at Marshall's. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know how many, 10 years ago, probably. Oh, you know what I was thinking the other day? Too, I like, tried to sell it to a young AG, telling, trying to convince him that it was worth money already because he was dead. They couldn't make any more. <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. But here I am still with it. <sighs> Let's talk. So we haven't talked about Anthony Green uh, and the dailies. Who? So let's just talk about Anthony Green. That I'm Kid's just... incredible. I'm just excited to see, like, I just miss him on Beyond. I miss him, like, I just miss wrestling. I miss being able to turn the TV yeah. and watch the, a kid that we've known for the last 10 years just go, along with his yeah, friends, makes... like, along with his friends. And, you know, the reason I bring that up is because you've got, t- today is actually, like, a, a, a four-year anniversary for your, yeah. like, your your brother, like, one of your, your, yeah. your really, really close, good friends in the business, yeah, and that's so... DC Dillinger, man. When I started going to wrestling shows, when we started doing the podcast and we got invited to NECW to help set up, and uh, it was around, I want to say May or June. And like when you go to these shows, like the wrestlers all come in and they're going to shake your hand, they're going to thank you for helping, but you don't talk to them. Uh, the promoter in August had a birthday party at one of the local bars. I sat down and uh, DC Dillinger, Eddie Edwards sat next to me because those two were inseparable. And DC looked at Eddie and went, Eddie, look, this kid's drinking beer. He's not reading comic books. He's not sitting in the corner quiet. He's drinking beer with us. And from that point on, like I was accepted and it was DC that like accepted it and made me uh, somebody that was okay in their circle. So like I could go to the bars with them. He used to always joke that he was going to put me in a, um, a suit and give me an airpiece and I was going to be their security, which it wound up happening on more than one occasion anyway, without the suit and airpiece. But, uh, Dave was a tough guy to get to know because he had a really tough exterior. Um, I'll share one story and, uh, there was a kid that was on tough enough and Dave had these legendary parties. I think it was his Memorial day party. And, uh, he, um, <laughs> This kid was in there, and uh, it was just Dave was talking shit. He was being Dave, and this kid got so upset. Dave got pissed off. He threw his iPad off the wall, fucking broke the thing, and uh, goes outside, and he's he's sitting out there, and he lived in the middle of city the city just outside of Boston, but there was random ducks in a freaking puddle there. And one of the kids from the party was outside to check on him, and there's Dave with a piece of bread feeding these ducks in the middle of the street in the city. And uh, 
He says, you know what? I'm going to go back inside. He goes back inside. It's his party. He's welcome. Looks at this kid and says, are you fucking tough enough now, you fucking prick? And that was the end of it. But that was Dave. Like, he spoke his piece. But at the end of the day, he's that guy sitting on the sitting on his front stairs feeding the ducks. Like, he was a great dude. And if you didn't get the chance to get to know him, you lost out. If you took the chance, if you weren't afraid of him, and you didn't just draw him out as that tough exterior that he showed, you got a great friend. Everybody who he was friends with was his best friend. It, it's incredible. Is it fair enough to ask, if I, I don't know if I'm out, if I'm out of bounds when I ask you this question, you tell me. But like, how how much did um, DC's death affect Eddie? Uh, enough so that like Eddie made it a point to uh, put Dave on TV. So if you guys remember when Eddie won the champ- championship. I think it was his first one. Um, they did a whole little spotlight on Eddie Edwards. And you can look it up. It's on YouTube. And uh, he mentions Dave. They talk about Dave okay, Cahill. Trump. Okay, Trump. They talk about Dave Cahill. It's Dave Cahill, but um, as Eddie's tranny. He wasn't Eddie's tranny. He was Eddie's best friend. He was Eddie's brother. Like, that's what it was. And uh, it, it's those two were inseparable through the independence until – you know, once Eddie started traveling a little more, Dave, Dave had it in him. Dave was, no lie, the best promo that none of you guys have ever heard. I challenge all of you to go on YouTube tonight and just look up a DC Dillinger promo. He was incredible. You wanted to hate this guy. He just had that. And he loved he that he had me. that. It, it, it just, it sucks. Man, because he I knew he was he money, too. He knew it. Everybody knew it. So everybody knew he was money. Uh, Maddie that called into the show a couple weeks ago, he like he was affected by uh, like so many of the local guys that like he took a lot of the local kids under his wing and kind of quietly trained them because he couldn't do it out, he couldn't do it out in the open because then people wouldn't realize he wasn't really an asshole. Yeah, 100%. I guess that's a big deal. So he was just a great guy, a great, a great worker, like incredible. And he was good in the ring. But yeah, if you guys go look up DC Dillinger promos, I, I know I'm getting it tonight. I was actually tearing up earlier today because like, I do miss Dave. I do miss DC. So well, you, you, You're fortunate to have, have those types of relationships in the business, and you're fortunate to have that type of personality um, about yourself that the type of people in this business are willing to trust you with a lot of things that they wouldn't That's, the average person. Right. Here we are four years later, and a lot of his like his closest friends, Eddie, George Carroll, uh, my buddy Maddie, uh, they still really can't talk about it. Yeah, I forgot about George. I, sent, I forgot about George. I sent them all messages today. I said, no need to reply. Just letting you guys know I'm thinking about just, you know. Yeah. Well, with, with that being said, man, um, our half hour is up. For those that have stuck around and watched on a Friday night, man, really thanks again for taking your time and spending it with us we're, our goal is to really just increase this by one person a day that hangs out with us and uh likes to and loves to let's, talk pro wrestling so let's end this on a positive note real quick how you feel about bringing in another person for these lives once in a while absolutely whenever we want dude absolutely. you know who i'm thinking who no number don't four tell me. don't tell me tell me off number four what do you think yeah, this is a good spot. This is On good these place. lives, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, I think it's a good spot because it's... There you go. It's, yeah, okay. I've been texting with him. He's down. I'm going to meet with him next week. We're going to meet him. We're going to sit down. And... I'm 100% I'm 100% down with that. We need that. Yeah, it's a... The, the, these daily lives, we guys, to, we're going to we keep doing it. We need a coffee giveaway. That's what we need, so... Yes. Okay, everybody, yes. thank you again for watching. And as always, uh, at the number three Irish boys with a Z, um, I'm currently trying to um, recover my Twitter handle, uh, which sucks. So <laughs> what happened was it got hacked. Somebody's trying to hack my account. It just happened. You're, you're popular enough to get hacked. Yeah. So anyway, thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>